Hey there, thanks for taking a moment in the Word. Uh, I don't know how you are or where you are today. I just invite you to take a deep breath. <sighs> Sometimes we don't pause enough in life, I've noticed. So just take another deep breath. Just be still for just a second. And let's ask God just to bless this time in the Word. Lord, I thank you uh, for a moment in your Word. And I just pray for you to use it accomplish your purpose in it, allow us to be deepened in you because of it. In your name, amen. So this story um, comes in the early part of Jesus's ministry. And here's where it starts. After some days, Jesus returned to Capernaum and many heard that he'd come there and was in the house. And so many gathered in the house and outside of it that there was no longer any room for anyone more. And Jesus preached the word to them. Now, some men came carrying a paralytic and they couldn't find their way into the house. So they went and removed some of the roof and breaking through, lowered the paralytic on the mat. Four of them did this down in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven you. Now, some scribes there were thinking in their hearts, This man blasphemies. Who can forgive sin but God alone? And Jesus, knowing by the Spirit what they were thinking, said, Why do you think these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say, You are forgiven or rise, take up your mat and go home, but that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive his sins. And he said to the paralytic, I tell you, rise, take up your mat and go home. At once, the man stood up, rolled up his mat and walked out in front of all of them. The people glorified God and said, we've never seen anything like this. So at the start of the story, we have Jesus returning to Capernaum after he'd been preaching all sorts of places. And people heard he was there and that he was in the house. And so they came to him immediately. Lots of people came. So many that when these, these people came carrying the paralytic, they couldn't get in, right? Isn't that interesting? When we learn about the crowd listening to Jesus, that the guys carrying the paralytic couldn't even get in. Like, I mean, did they shout? Did they ask? They might have. So what could we learn about the crowd that, I don't know, they were so interested in Jesus. They didn't even notice that somebody else was wanting to get near. Or maybe that they just didn't know, hear them. Uh, maybe that they were, they were crowded together and didn't want to interrupt by allowing somebody else in. So the guys carrying the paralytic, they could have given up, right? And they didn't give up. So do we learn anything about them that instead of giving up, which would have been a logical thing to do, can you imagine climbing up on the roof and thinking that that's an option and going, um, taking apart the roof and then breaking through to be able to lower the man to Jesus. It makes me wonder in this story, like, what can we learn about the paralytic that he allowed them to do this? And then also these four guys, or four people, what can we learn about them that they did this? Does it tell us anything about their lives or who they are? You know, when Jesus, after they lowered him, when Jesus looked up, he looked up at them and said, and, and uh, um, seeing their faith, it says, seeing their faith, seeing their faith, he said to the paralytic, my son, your sins are forgiven. What can we learn about the quality of the character of faith? That Jesus, when he saw their faith, spoke to the other and said, your sins are forgiven. It makes me wonder if the guys who had lowered him might be thinking, what? <laughs> we didn't lower him to have his sins forgiven. We lowered him to be healed. But notice, nobody has any requests that's said here. They just have actions. Isn't that interesting? There's no words that get spoken by the four guys or by the paralytic. 
None. The only one that speaks in this story is Jesus. And then the, the guys that murmur in their hearts, right, the scribes. So could we learn, you know, that, the, that their, their faith was visible because of what they did. And seeing their faith, it took faith, didn't it? To think that this was a possible entry point, to dig through the roof. <laughs> so amazing. And, and the guy, I wonder what impact it had on this paralytic to have the first thing Jesus says to him, my son, your sins are forgiven. How might that have impacted him there? I mean, what, what might have gone through his heart? And do you think that as he lay there, that that was enough? I think he still wanted to be healed physically when maybe a greater healing took place because he'd received forgiveness from Jesus. I know what that was like, but it must have been incredible. And the scribes that are looking on and murmuring in their hearts about Jesus, you know, that he, um, th these guys, what do you learn about them? I mean, could they have been thinking something else? Could they have been awed by the fact that someone is declaring the forgiveness of sins on earth? Therefore, as they've already murmured in their hearts, only God can forgive sins. So what did this say about Jesus? But they didn't do that, did they? They murmured. They were like pondering or um, criticizing within themselves about Jesus and, and just sitting in that, but not saying it out loud. Jesus heard because the Spirit let him know. I love the Holy Spirit. So cool. So, and then you have the healing. So Jesus has been um, preaching the word to these people, and then you have this event happen, and it's almost like he spoke the word, then it got demonstrated, right? This incredible privilege of seeing God's word put into action. I, I, I just, um, I just rest in the story. It's like a cool story, right? Have, do you ever any, have any place in life where sometimes you feel like you are crippled by that thing? It might not be physical. We can be crippled by attitudes and by belief systems inside of our heads, right? And so what might be crippling you that could be brought to Jesus? Or how might you because of your faith, assist somebody else to get close to him. Or, I wonder, have we ever been part of a crowd interested in Jesus, but because of our great interest, we held others at bay? Jesus, in this scripture, says two amazing things, right? Your sins are forgiven. Get up. Take up your mat. Go home. So, if you have any point of forgiveness you need today, I would just repeat those words to you. And I just say to you from Jesus, you are forgiven. He's done it all. You are forgiven. And so may you arise and walk with freedom. Hey, thanks for taking a few minutes. May you have a day filled with sunshine and God's grace.